understand that you move to a new town. It's easy to fall into the same routines you had in your old town. Okay, I got to go to the same grocery store. I go to the same gym. I go to work. And then I'm back turning on Netflix. Instead, go check out Airbnb experiences. There are food walking tours. There are art gallery tours. There are so many activities going on in your city all over the world that allow you to be a tourist, allow you to get out and actually see more, learn some of the history of the town and interact with people who are running those tours who are really social, who are really extroverted, who are really connected. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the show today. We drop great content each and every week, and we want to make sure that you guys get notified. And in order to do that, you're going to have to smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And if you've gotten a lot of value out of this, make sure you give us a like and share our videos with your friends. Absolutely. And the other thing that we're going to discuss later that is going to help with this is what your mission is. And we'll get to that because your third place is going to be integral to helping you in that mission. And we'll discuss that and even joining a gym yep even joining an equinox or a ymca and instead of rushing out of the gym to get ready at home hanging out in the locker room picking up on the chatter is a great way for you to start seeding what we call propinquity now propinquity is when people see familiar faces they naturally become fond of them and johnny and i have for the most part, lived in high-rise buildings in big cities. And if you're wearing a smile and you're making eye contact in the elevator, over time, your neighbors are gonna warm up to you for this exact reason. Many of you might be finding your coworkers attractive. Why? Because you're spending a lot of time seeing them over and over again. So when you join a gym, when you go to a third place, you're allowing propinquity to work to your advantage by going there consistently, having great body language, smile, eye contact, and chatting, even if they're short bursts of chatter, over time, those people are gonna warm up to you, and next thing you know, you're getting invited. I just wanted just to comment on that, and this is the reason everybody who's hearing this knows that you should not be forming romantic relationships with people at work or, you know, like places where you go where, where that's going to interfere with what you need to do. The reason that everyone falls into that trap is exactly what you just said. It's propinquity. Because if you're not creating options outside of that, your biology is going to create the options where you are. And this is why everybody who knows that it comes, and you know how many questions that we get a week that starts with, there's this woman at work or there's this guy at work. Yeah, and the reason, and my first thing is because you're not creating options outside of that. Just as a funny thing that you mentioned, I wanted yeah. to just bring that up. And those, those opportunities for you to have great body language, to be seen at the Monday morning workout, the Tuesday morning workout, by Thursday in the Barry's locker room, you're gonna be in conversation with people. Yep. They will see that familiar face and that smile. I've done it in elevators. And, and Johnny, we laughed about this. In New York, you know, it felt like it was a lot easier to strike up conversations in LA. At first when we moved, it was like, man, people just avoid eye contact. They just want to get about their day. But still that same theory worked in Los Angeles, in elevators, in our building. Give it a few weeks of saying hello, asking them how their day's going until they break and all of a sudden you're having a conversation and you're invited up to their apartment for cocktails or you're inviting them over to yours to watch the football game. And all of a sudden, you've created a relationship with a neighbor that you would have thought was a little cold. It's funny that you say that. And, and, and that was an observation. And then we worked through that and saw that it was, it was just on a surface level. When I moved to Vegas in the building that I'm in, I had to get used to everyone being super friendly. And now Vegas also operates in a, on a hospitality level too. It's a tourist town. Everyone is, and so now I have to find, I find myself to make sure that I say hello and stuff because everyone is so friendly and I'll feel bad if I don't. Where in Los Angeles, you could get away of stay, living in your apartment and riding into the elevator, not saying anything to anybody. However, if you break that surface, you'll see that everyone is just as friendly as anywhere else. It's just the subtle nuances that you recognize culturally. 
Now let's talk about finding places to socialize and have fun because I know some in the audience are like, man, I don't even know where to start with the third place. And our, our third tip is actually become a tourist in your new city. Understand that you move to a new town, it's easy to fall into the same routines you had in your old town. Okay, I gotta go to the same grocery store, I go to the same gym, I go to work, and then I'm back turning on Netflix. Instead, go check out Airbnb experiences. There are food walking tours, there are art gallery tours, there are so many activities going on in your city all over the world that allow you to be a tourist, allow you to get out and actually see more, learn some of the history of the town and interact with people who are running those tours who are really social, who are really extroverted, who are really connected. We drop great content each and every week and we wanna make sure that you guys get notified. And in order to do that, you're gonna to have to smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And if you've gotten a lot of value out of this, make sure you give us a like and share our videos with your friends. Yeah, this is such an eye-opening experience to me when I was living in Vienna for, I think, two years and I didn't know anything about the city. I just knew the classic tourist spots. Why? Because whenever my family came to visit, that's where I brought them. So I had like <laughs> these three spots I would always go to and or when, when I had someone around. And I remember I was, for whatever reason, I was in the train station at the tourist info and I saw one of their flyers, their maps, which you can unfold and it's like huge. And it's like a hundred different things to check out. And I was like, why have I been living here for two years? And I haven't like, seen this and I haven't seen that. And, and I'm only learning about the city whenever someone is here. I'm watching a movie and I would, I would see a movie like, uh, what was the name of the movie? Uh, I think The Golden Lady was the name of the movie. And I saw this beautiful castle where palace where, where half the movie was happening. And I punched it into Google and I realized that's five minutes from my place. Yeah. And I was thinking like, how have I never seen, like <laughs> I've, never, I've never been there. And, and so now for this upcoming winter, I do have a, a, a ticket to all the museums in the city. And when, when snow is falling, I'm going to tour all the museums and take in all of that stuff. Now, for those who are listening, and, and you might say to yourself, well, I don't live in Vienna, and I don't live in Los Angeles, and I don't live in Vegas. I mean, you guys, of course, got plenty of wonderful things to see. I'm going to tell you a story. So my, I grew up in Greensburg, Pennsylvania. It's 40 minutes uh, south e east of Pittsburgh, and, and about an hour out of, from Ohio and, and West Virginia. And it's in the foothills of the Appalachians. And it was settled as a mining town in the uh, late 1800s. And of course, growing up there as a young man, I was concentrating on how do I get out of here? That was my plan. I, I wanted to check out cities. I wanted to play music, all the, all the you know, every, that most young men are like that. You want to get out, you want to explore. So, and I bag on it a lot because I grew up there. But I have a friend who still lives there who made a blog of old mining camps that are through the Appalachians. And when he posts pictures and stories from these blogs about these areas and what happened there and, and what they look like now, I'm utterly mesmerized. And I think it's the most beautiful thing. There is history to wherever you are. It's up to you to discover what that is. And that's what makes where you are special. And imagine discovering these places, of course, and for myself and, and, and AJ, we're all like this. When we discover something new, the first thing that we wanna do is tell other people about it. We wanna share about it. So when you're discovering these new things about where you are, it's going to give you plenty of things that you're going to want to discuss at your third place. And there's, there's something else that you'll probably recognize as you go to these places, as you go through these Airbnb experiences, as AJ has suggested, that a lot of the people that you meet there will be there for exactly the same reason you are. They'll say, well, you know, I'm in town for a month. I just wanted to see what's happening here. Or I just moved here and I wanted to learn more about the city. So, so these events automatically bring you in contact with a lot of people that have exactly the mindset you have and they're new 
to the city, which is which, which makes them just a magical combination of fun, learning, culture, and getting to know new people. And that's why anytime we host a, a boot camp on the road or a mastermind on the road, we're going to Miami next month yes. for our X Factor mastermind. And the first thing that I do is check out Airbnb experiences. The second thing that I do is I hop on Yelp, I sort by rating, I click on the Yelp reviews of the best restaurants and places to check out, and I search the reviews for birthday, bachelor, bachelorette party. And anyone who had a great experience at a birthday party or a bachelor or bachelorette party, odds are that place is really lively. It's really social. It's really open to people meeting and connecting. And birthday parties especially because they bring out people who wouldn't normally go out. I go out very infrequently. I know we talk about it a lot on the show, but after years of taking clients out and going out, I have my, my routine set. But whenever I'm visiting a new town and I want to get a sense for the vibe or I'm trying to plan a field night for our clients, I know that I want to find a social, fun, outgoing venue, make it easy on us. And I've gone to birthday parties and met amazing people just by enjoying the atmosphere, having the most fun in the room. And you'll find that Yelp sorts this for you. It does all the legwork for you. So that's a little insider tip. And we've done boot camps in London and Germany and Miami. And the fun part about it is at the end of the program, clients will be like, how do you know about all these spots? What'd you do? How'd you scout it out? I use the power of the internet. These are the simple tactics of doing a little research, doing a little legwork that allow you to find the best spots. And now once you've found that spot, when you meet new people, you can invite them to check out the folklore, to check out the touristy spots with you. Because odds are most locals probably haven't engaged in that stuff. 